it doesn't matter what your race is or what the color of your skin is. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor. It's about really caring and loving one another. It's, it's about unity. It's about love. It's about prayer. It's about moving forward so that all of us have a better future as one human race, as humanity. A long time ago, they told us this story that there will be this big snake that comes. And when the black snake comes, the world will end. years ago they said when that happens we have to stand up we have to stop the black snake We're joined here in Park City um, by Bobby Jean Three Legs. She is a water protector who led other young people in a in a hundreds of miles. Well, how long was the run that you participated in, uh, Bobby Jean? That went from oh North Dakota to Washington D.C. Yes, it was about a 2,000 mile relay run. Uh, my brother Joseph Flydeis and I um, led about 40 youth. From the ages of thirty, uh, from the ages of thirteen to thirty. And when you heard this news about the presidential memorandum, the executive action issued by President Trump uh, yesterday, what were your thoughts? That he's waking up a lot of people. That a lot of people are really paying attention to the climate change now. Um, that we're never going to back down. Are you afraid? Yes. I'm mostly afraid for the future generations um, because this is going to affect them the most. I have a two-year-old daughter at home, and I can't imagine what 
life is going to be like when she's in her mid 40s or 50s. I can't imagine what my great grandchildren or anybody's future grandchildren or those not born yet will be going through when they come into this world. In opposition of the Dakota Access Pipeline, a group of indigenous youth organized a 500 mile relay run from the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation to the office of the United States Army Corps in Omaha, Nebraska. They delivered a petition asking them not to grant the final federal permits needed to complete the pipeline. One of the main organizers of the youth run was 24-year-old Bobby Jean Three Lakes. It doesn't take extraordinary people to do extraordinary things. It takes a good mind and a good heart. We started out with four runners, just two girls and two older guys from the camp. It took us eight days to do the whole run to get down to Omaha. It was to bring awareness to the people about the Dakota Access Pipeline being built here. Not a lot of people knew about it. Like when we were coming through the towns, that was some of the people's very first time hearing about it. I wanted to bring it awareness to the youth because this is gonna affect them the most. You're wearing a t-shirt. Can you tell us what it says? Um, it says Minnewachone. It means water is life, water is sacred. Water is our first, med our first medicine for many tribes um, around indigenous communities, and um, it all goes back to being a mother. Your baby is first coming from water, so it's, it's very sacred, and your babies are in water for nine months before they even breathe their first breath of air. And it's what do you tell Chloe about water? Um, like, we'll just say, I'll just say Minnie Wachoni to her and she'll just, like, say water is life. <laughs> she, like, she's paying attention. She's only two. Bobby, do you want kids? I have a baby. You have a baby? She's the reason why I kind of started with my efforts against all this, because every morning she wakes up and she asks me or her dad for a drink of water. It's just that simple, you know? And what am I going to do if... I can't give her water or give her bath or feed her. It's pretty scary to think about when you're a mom. You know, you participate in a protest here in Park City, protesting Chase and Chase Sapphire, uh, because Chase Manhattan Bank is invested in the Coda Access Pipeline. If you want to have a say what your money is being used for, I'm asking you to divest in your bank, like Citibank behind me. Um, these are one of the biggest funders for the Coda Access Pipeline that's trying to be built through four states. And when this pipeline breaks, it's only gonna take five minutes to get into the Standing Rock Reservation water intake. Um, an hour where I live, and it just goes all the way down the Missouri River. Originally, the Dakota Access Pipeline was supposed to be built by Bismarck Mandan, but they said that the people of Bismarck Mandan were concerned that you know it would affect their water source and stuff. So they decided to put it not even a half a mile away from our reservation. It pretty much just makes us feel like, oh, it's just the Indians, you know? We're humans too. We're human beings. And divesting in your banks is probably one of the biggest things that you can do with this fight uh, because they are using your money to build this pipeline. So we're doing everything that we can on our part to um, bring awareness and Hopefully more people can divest in their banks that are with the Dakota Access Pipeline so that they don't have funding to build this pipeline. Um, uh, you were there with many people, some who had been hit by rubber bullets. Yes, just barely even like three days before that. Um, it's still going on. There's still police brutality going on. People are still getting maced. They're getting shot. Um, our sister Red Fawn is still in jail. There's over 600 people that have been arrested so far, and it's just, it keeps going up. Right now, I'm just asking all the youth around the country to stand up. I'm asking everyone around the world to stand up with us. Wherever you are, just make your own, you know, make your own gathering, make your own posters, go live, anything that, any support would be really appreciative. All the runners were really random. We didn't even plan anything, kind of just sort of happened, and it felt really good. And you could see it in the people's faces, especially in the, the elders. What do you think that they're seeing when they see young people running and when they see you running and, and when they, they hear about the camp? 
that we want to learn, that we care, and we care about Mother Earth, that we care about our traditions, our culture, pretty much just not letting it die out. And that's our responsibility to keep it alive so that my grandchildren from 100 years from now will know all these things. Where have you been going to college? Uh, I, the last college I was going to was United Tribes Technical College. In Bismarck, North Dakota. Yeah. Um, so what is your understanding of what's happened? You, we go from President Obama saying not granting an easement to allow the pipeline to go under the Missouri River, yes. which provides water, what, down to 10 million people below this area, including, well, you're from, you're Standing Rock Sioux, but from the South Dakota side. Yes. Um, when this pipeline breaks, because all mad main things break eventually, whether it's going to be 100 years from now or less, we don't have water intakes on our on our water, or we don't have filters on our water intake system. So it's only going to take five minutes to to get into Cannonball, North Dakota's water intake, an hour to walk Paula Mobridge where I live, and two hours for Shine River, and it just goes all the way down the river. And this isn't just a Native American issue. This is a, a human race issue. And there's about 17 million people that drink from the Missouri River, and pretty much this is the biggest water source in the United States. You How many siblings? Six of us. You have six siblings? Yeah, one. I have one brother and five sisters. We all kind of have to grow up really early from like everything that we went through. Can you tell me more about that? Um, had a lot to do with alcohol. Just, I don't know, all of us kind of just went our separate ways for a little bit. I had actually got the opportunity to go to college. What did you take? Criminal justice. Why did you want to take criminal justice? Uh, because of everything I've been through when I was younger and all the stories that I hear about, like sexual assaults and the crime, made me want to do that for my people because we need a lot more support that way. What is the struggle? Uh, alcohol and drugs, domestic violence, sexual assault, you know, like molestation, rape. That, I believe, comes from the boarding schools because that's what they learn. And like it happened to me whenever I was a little girl. I was about five or six years old. I had already been molested. It went on until I was about nine years old. As a kid, I was really lost. I didn't know who to trust. But you like see that in like every like generation. Like you see it in my grandparents' generation and my parents' generation, all the way down to us. Hello. Good to meet you guys. Hmm? Where's your glass? Uh, no. I, got, I got tipped over helping somebody with their motorcycle. Oh. Dad, what do you think about the pipeline? I think they're so rich, the oil companies, they're going to get what they want. They're what's always the ones that are rich, have money that can get their way. They don't think about the grassroots people at all. When she asked me, the only thing about this run that I knew, she asked me, she said, Dad, do you think I could do it? I said, you know, it's not a matter of if you could do it. I said, it's a matter of what you're going to do after that. I said, because you're going to open one door, it's going to lead to another door. You're representing the people. I said, they'll always be watching you now. And that's a big responsibility to have. I know what you did was very important because you shed a lot of light on it. I know there's some coalitions that are starting up a little bit more fired up because of what you did. You made the, the non-natives more aware of what the pipelines are actually doing. That it's not just a native because issue? It's not just a native issue. Yeah. I guess this is the starting point where we're fighting back. When your daughter gets older, I see I see a lot better things for them than happened for me or my parents. You've been involved with the protests since before April 1st, the day that LaDonna Brave Bull Allard opened her own 
property uh, to the sacred stone resistance camp and encourage people to come. You were among the first. Um, I've seen a, I've seen these five um, groups that were pretty much like the beginning of this movement: uh, Joy Braun, uh, Jonathan Edwards, Hen Henrietta Defender, and there was a couple other ones. I think my brother Joseph was there. Um, and when I got to see them come in and open up Sacred Stone Camp, it was my first part of being a something. And it just, it, I felt like I belonged there. And I've, I believe that everybody that's camped out there now feels the same way. And I'm so thankful for them being there because without them, this pipeline probably would have already been built a long time ago. They're staying out of the way of everyone. They don't want no problems. You know, they, they, they've been going probably about half a day without water. So if any of you have you know, extra water, share it with them. Because I know that they probably don't want to be here. So you know, be kind, be, be, be a human, and share it with them. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Oh, you guys truly really don't. Thank you very much. Thanks. That, that's the point. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, we won't, we won't. There is a standoff in the Great Plains. 200 Native American tribes are fighting construction of an oil pipeline. Dakota Access Pipeline would have the same impact on the planet as 21.4 million cars. It would also pose a serious threat to the water supply along its entire 1170 mile route, not just on Standing Rock Sioux land, but downstream in the Missouri and the Mississippi rivers. In what possible world is this a good idea? By the time I was like 10 or 11, I had already tried to commit suicide. I did pills a lot and I drank a lot too. It was just kind of getting out of control. It took me a long time to realize that I love myself and that I'm not going to let that define me. I finally found it in myself to quit. We need to just forgive that part of us and just grow from it and try to prevent it as much as we can. And if, it, if that means just talking out loud about it, you know, that's what we, we need to do. And, you know, I see it and I grew up with it. I've been through it and, and I want to fix it. I would, I would go crazy if someone ever hurt my baby. Never, never thought that I would ever be working with the youth until they asked me to coach them. So we started doing that and started having practices and we went to a couple of tournaments together and you know, went for runs in our town, and that has really, like, turned my life around, too, being able to do that. It's a game that gets them away from reality. You know, it's just, just trying to show them that we can be positive, and, you know, whatever we're going through at home or whatever, we don't have to let that define us, and that we can go out and live our dreams and get an education and all that. Actually, about seven miles down the road, they built a road in, uh, and they dropped barricades to keep people from going in. But they've been getting their equipment in through the back. If any of you guys know any of the people with horses, they're asking them to scout in and see where the machinery is. All right. So we need to. Are you sending everyone over there now? Yeah. Three, three uh, gravel trucks and one train. Okay. Coming this way. Yeah, coming this way. They should be here. They were half hour ago. They were in a state cemetery. Coming. Okay. Okay. Ready? What are we doing? Our water's under attack. Stand up, fight back. What are we doing? Our people are under attack. Stand up, fight back. What are we doing? Our lives are under attack. Stand up, fight back. Ah, you know, we are not. Bobby Jean leads her youth group in another run to raise awareness for the fight. This time, the youth run from North Dakota all the way to D.C. 
arriving on Obama's front steps on August 5th with a petition signed by 140,000 people in support of halting the pipeline construction. about two days ago that they were going to start drilling under the Missouri River and we we're trying to stop it with every power that we have and it took us three weeks to get here to DC we did over a 2,000 mile relay run all these kids are from different various reservations throughout the Midwest our livelihoods are at stake and we were asking for your support and your signatures to help us stop this pipeline I feel like my people were so oppressed for hundreds of years that they never got to have a voice to speak out. And, you know, maybe it did take us kids to say something for people to listen, but now people are listening. And, you know, they're hearing where we're coming from. They get to understand our perspective of life. And, you know, this is scary. This is all our futures. But, and I feel like this is the time that's changing now. I really do. I, I feel like a great change is coming. You know, running across the country and bringing this awareness, like, look how much people it brought here. <laughs> it's so crazy to, like, watch everything grow. But it makes me feel good that our message is being heard really clearly. You can see it. Like, these are things that I've just imagine like I never thought I would get to be a part of it's not just about you know protecting our land and water but it's about healing because I know on different reservations they go through the same thing that we do and it's just it feels so good that all of us are in one spot and it feels really good to like know that you belong to them and they belong to you. Things are getting pretty serious now. Um, they have dogs out there. They have pit bulls, uh, German shepherds. Um, they're macing people. All my people on Standing Rock, I need you to wake up and open your eyes and ears. I need you to get out there and stand with the people. Stand up for your land. Stand up for your families, your daughters, your sons. It makes me cry because what would we do without all these people on our land, without all these people helping, trying to help protect us? They're risking their lives right now, and the government does not give a f right now. I need my Standing Rock people to wake up, you know, put the bottle down for a day, you know, put their drugs away for a day, I know. I know that's why we're struggling right now. I know that. I know those struggles. But this is a much more bigger struggle. This is our land. And this is what we have to take care of. <laughs>